Leonardo da Vinci produced many hundreds of drawings during his life, many of them of extreme beauty and complexity. And it's incredible to think that he produced them using these very simple ingredients. He would have learnt how to draw using a silver point on a wooden tablet. Now, silver won't draw directly on a wooden tablet, so what artists used to do was to get some bone ash and mix it with saliva and rub it onto the tablet. So when dry, this bone preparation can just simply be drawn on with the silver point. And then when you've finished uh, and you want to do something else, wet your finger and you can erase it all. Now one of the problems with trying to use silver point on paper is that it doesn't write on paper. That's because the paper isn't abrasive enough. So what we need to do is to coat the paper. I'm going to start by putting a little of the bone ash onto my ground glass slab. I'm now going to add red lead pigment, ivory black, and mix them up. Now add a little bit of water. Ground into a bowl. So now I'm going to add a little bit of glue. It needs enough to bind it all together and create a smooth surface on the paper. So here we have the dried ground. And as I bring the silver point across onto the ground, immediately you can see the strokes. But equally you can draw as cursively as you like. Paper in Leonardo's day was handmade from rags which were beaten to a pulp and the paper was formed by dipping a sieve called a mould into the vat of pulp. Leonardo, like most artists of his period, would have drawn in ink using a quill pen much like this, made from a goose feather. So I've had these feathers baking for about an hour in hot sand to harden the end of the quill and to absorb some of the oils we have to first of all scrape away the membrane from the tip of the quill, cut the quill to a convenient length, about a hand span, and then have to make two cuts and then cut the tip square and inscribe a small groove inside the tip of the nib to allow the ink to flow towards the tip. The type of ink that Leonardo used was made from oak gall, gum arabic, and iron sulphate. What the quill allows the artist to do is to draw very fine lines when he wants to and Leonardo used that technique on a lot of his anatomical drawings to get the very very sharp delineations of shade on curved surfaces. Equally though he could use the pen as a means of working out his designs and it was a very uh, creative process using almost scribbly lines We've got natural black chalk here, which is very rich in carbon, and we've got natural red chalk, which is rich in iron. And the reason that Leonardo used these materials was to allow him a sort of freer style of drawing. It's quite hard with this kind of chalk to achieve the delicacy of line that you see, for example, in the study of the man uh, from behind. I'm now going to try the black chalk, uh, and this is a good deal harder. And this is much more like the quality of material that Leonardo had available to him. Leonardo frequently used black chalk as an underdrawing uh, to some of his ink drawings, particularly the anatomical drawings. Leonardo used watercolours a lot in his maps. The watercolours used at that time are exactly the same as the watercolours we use nowadays. And they consist of a ground pigment and gum arabic. The gum water is added slowly until you get a very thick paste and that's poured into some container and artists in the Renaissance period used shells somewhat like this. This is a freshwater mussel shell. Leonardo's constant experimentation with materials and form show his genius, straining to express the product of his imagination. Understanding how these works were produced brings us closer to one of history's greatest creative minds.